Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harrison. This is my podcast. Do you ever wonder about the future? Well, you're in luck. This season, we are studying future things revealed in the Word of God. I hope you're excited about that. Let's look forward to checking these things out. Let's fight the good fight of faith as we study future things. So as we are continuing our study of future things, eschatology, and looking at the things happening in the future, we have been through a lot of different things. We actually uh, looked at that gap period between the rapture and the tribulation last week. So, uh, you know, uh, as we've been looking at our timelines and things like that, at the rapture, you know, the Lord comes back, we are caught up together to be with Him, and so shall we be with the Lord, and we head off in the future, and we talked about ourselves and the things going on for us, and now we're sort of looking at what's happening on the earth. And... um, what, uh, what we know is that the, the next thing after the rapture is, as we see here in Daniel chapter 9, once you go there in verse 24, Daniel 9, 24, I need to get there myself. <clears throat> it says, 70 weeks, Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, Daniel, because that's who he's talking to, and upon thy holy city, Daniel, which would be Jerusalem, okay, to fi- and here's those 70 weeks, to finish the trans, here's what the result of those 70 weeks are to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. All right, what that's referring to is the kingdom. That's where Jesus Christ is going to set up his king, and and, uh, Israel's sins are going to be taken care of. If you just hold your place right there and just go to Romans chapter 12, or 11, Romans 11, the apostle Paul makes a comment about this. We know that this present time Israel has been blinded for a season in our dispensation, dispensation of the grace of God. But what's true is after this dispensation ends, you're going to see, Paul's going to say the exact same thing. So here in Romans 11, verse 25, For I would not, brethren, Romans 11, 25, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. So there's been, Israel's been blinded for a season, for this dispensation. God is uh, not looking at a favored nation. He's not looking at, there is no favored nation today. He's looking at individuals, anyone, any place, anywhere can come to know Jesus Christ as personal Savior. It, you know, everybody's a heathen. You know, they're either in the body, out of the body. That's the situation uh, for what's going on. But the next verse says this, and... After that happens, when the full Gentiles become, and that's when we're raptured out, so all Israel shall be what? Saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my what? Covenant, my promise unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So there is a period of time, and by the way, that's when is after the rapture, after we're caught up. And in Daniel, back to back, if you go back to Daniel 9 again, we're just, uh, we're going to actually spend a lot of time in the book of Revelation today, so... But in Daniel 9, if you go back there, it says 70, works, 70 weeks are determined upon Israel, right? Upon you know, thy people, Daniel, and upon uh, uh, Jerusalem. And of those 70 weeks, what we know so far is that 69, 69 weeks have been completed. Verse 25 gives us a timeline of Daniel chapter 9. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, that's by the way, that's found in Nehemiah chapter 2, Okay, and said so to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, and a score is twenty, so that's seven weeks plus sixty-two more weeks, or sixty-nine weeks, right? And those are sixty-nine weeks of years, and you can begin ticking them off. You can count them. So if you know the year of Nehemiah two, count four hundred and what was it sixty-nine weeks, uh, four hundred eighty-three years, all right? you know you're getting into a period of time. And here's what you find out. It says, well, first in the seven weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even troublous times. Verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, so after 69 weeks, shall Messiah be what? Cut off. He's going to be killed. He's going to be crucified, right? So after 69 weeks, Messiah is crucified. He's cut off, all right? And then, but there's one more week remaining, right? We, the body of Christ, were placed, that's what in the other previous timeline, so you the cross, we are placed after that 69th week, all right, the body of Christ, this mystery dispensation, it's called, it's called the mystery because nobody saw it, wasn't revealed, wasn't shared, but now God's sharing it, 
Prophecy took you up, right here it is. Prophecy takes you up to the cross, right? Messiah, you know, Messiah is going to be cut off. And then what prophecy says, and then you get on to verse 7, 27. Verse 27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for what? One week. And that's that last week. And it's talking about he, talking about really it's the Antichrist. He's the prince uh, of the people who's going to destroy the city and stuff. But anyways, and he's going to, in the middle of the week, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading spreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even under the consummation, and that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, we'll look at that sometime, well, may or may not get to it today. In Matthew 24, talks about that when you shall see, you know, uh, Antichrist sit in the temple, call himself, you know, he's going to sit in the temple, uh, or when you see the armies compass Jerusalem, that's what it's talking about. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Thessalonians, he's going to sit in the temple and he's going to call himself God. He's going to show himself that he is God. He's going he's to demonstrate those types of things. That's that midst of the week, what's going to happen. And the book of Revelation sort of lays it out for us um, pretty interestingly. But anyways, so anyway, so that, that's this 70th week. I'm going to, I typically do it, what, I do it like this, right? No, I put it in triangles. So we're going to spend most, we're going to look in this 70th week of Daniel today. This tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? Uh, when the nation of Israel is like, is like, she's with child, she's going to bring forth. And she's going to bring forth a righteous nation, okay? But it's going to like a lot of pain, okay? It's tribulation. Um, the, um, but anyways, then this is, a, this is the 70th week of Daniel. It's uh, seven years long. Okay, those are all things related to that period of time. And last week, we looked at what was going on between the rapture and the tribulation, this gap. And we spent a little time looking at that, all right? So today, I want to spend time looking at tribulation. So the tribulation, and probably for the next several weeks, several months, I don't know. We'll talk, we'll, we'll see how fast we go at it. Uh, but in the, in, the, in, the, in the middle, or in this, this tribulation begins with the signing of a treaty, a covenant. That's what we just read there in Daniel 9, verse 27. And he shall confirm the covenant. He's going to confirm that covenant with many for one what? Week. So he's going he's gonna to sign a peace treaty, a, a peace deal. Right? And we saw that that's why there's a gap here, because there's some political realignment that needs to occur. Those ten nations are talked about in Psalm 83, uh, and they are all nations that are lined up around Israel. And some of those nations don't exist right now. The rapture can happen when? Anytime, right? So it can happen right now. If the rapture and the tribulation happened on the same day, you won't have to worry about the rapture being imminent because you just have to just watch the news. Watch what's going on in the Middle East, and when, you know, by the way, and some people have done that, right? They'll, you know, I mean, I said last week, I remember when I was a younger person, I don't know if I was a kid or what, but I remember Henry Kissinger was Antichrist, you know, well, way, way, way back when for those of us who are a little older than some of the younger folks here. Uh, but, you know, he was the Antichrist because he signed, he, he came up with a deal that worked. There was peace for how long? I don't know, it wasn't that long probably, but it was peace for, for a moment. Everybody thought he was Antichrist. But, um, but anyways, Antichrist is going to sign, there's going to be a, a, a peace treaty, all right? And he's going to come forth in that fashion, all right? Uh, but anyways, um, so this starts with a, a treaty, and it's, it's, the, it's the last week. The mystery has ended, all right? The secret purpose, well, I should say that. The mystery hasn't ended because we continue on. We're in heavenly places ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ, all right? But, you know, so we looked at that stuff where there's the judgment and then what we do, eternity future, uh, but now we're looking at the earth, right? So anyway, so there's this covenant, this promise. So let's go take a look at that, that period of time. So let's, let's go to Matthew. I guess I will go to Matthew first. And, and the reason is Matthew gives us sort of a, a flyover of the tribulation, all right? So we're going to do the flyover first. That's what I've been doing, right? I've been taking the big picture, and then we'll go down and hit the narrow, narrow pieces, all right, so let's look at Matthew, because you know, I rethought what I want to do, so we'll do Matthew. Uh, so, the, so the apostles came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and they said, so what's going to happen? You know, you know, you know what, what's happening? Uh, you know, what, what's going to occur? Because, um, you know, they, they know some things, and, but Christ's going to lay it all out for them. Um, he makes a comment. Well, it's Matthew 24. Did I tell you where to go? Matthew 24. It's also talked about in Luke 17, I think, but 
Matthew 24 is where we're going to start. So Matthew 24, verse 1, says, And Jesus, actually Luke 21, sorry. And Jesus went out, Luke, uh, Matthew 24, verse 1, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and disciples came to him for, him to, sh for to show him the building of the temple. They said, look at this. You know, there's been a lot of money spent on this. Herod put a lot of money into this temple. Uh, mil you know, as pastor said, millions of dollars, right? Uh, and you know, probably even more than that if you consider, you know, you know things that have happened. But, uh, but in verse 2, And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He says, You look at it, it's amazing, but it's going to be leveled. All right? And then he also talks about himself in, in some context. But, but what happens here in verse 3 is that the, they sort of leave that position. Verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, so they you know, sort of walked away from there, up the Mount of Olives. By the way, the disciples came to him privately saying, right? You see that? Okay, by the way, that meant in verse 2, that was not a private conversation, right? What it meant was there were others there. And so, by the way, others came along and said, hey, he said he's going to destroy, you know, you know, later on he's about destroying the temple and some stuff like that. And so anyway, this is a private conversation now. So they're sitting there and he says, and they say to him, tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So basically saying, you know, what's going to happen, right? And when I said about the end of the world, it's not the end of the world as you think about, you know, um, uh, you know like all things are done, like, you know, Armageddon or something like that. What it's referring to, what, what, what they're asking him, it says, when's this, gonna, when's this period of time going to end so we get into the kingdom? Because, you know, because you know, right now, I mean, who's, is Israel, you know, is Israel a, a, a sovereign nation? No, I mean, they're, they're being, it'd be like, you know, the Chinese ruling America. You know, they'd be, they're running everything and you're, you're here, the Russians running America, right? I mean, you're, you're running around, you're sort of a, you have some freedom, but everything's being dictated by a foreign government. Well, Rome has, you know, they're, they're, they're in charge of the details of life, you know. I mean, the, the, the hierarchy answers to Rome. You know, who's Pilate? You know, I mean, you know, who, are the, who are these people? They're not, you know, they're not, uh, you know, the Jewish uh, leadership, right? Uh, so there were some the Roman governments in running things. And they wonder, when's that going to end? Because what did Paul say? Or what did Daniel say? You know, it's going to be, you know, you know, Paul, you know, Paul, you know, Paul, you know Paul, if you read Daniel 2, and we didn't do that today, Daniel 2, 7 or 8 or, and, and 9, you, you're going to find out there's going to be an everlasting kingdom, Right? Okay, and, and, and they know, the apostles know that. And so, you know, when's this going to end? When's this going to end? We're going to move on to being this nation that's sovereign and we, and we are, you know, running the show. So here's what Christ tells them, verse 4. So here what he does, he gives them a, a flyover of what's going to happen, right? Uh, and it's in order, okay? So it's, it's, it's a pretty, you know, it's a, basically he's going to take them, he's going to take them from uh, the beginning of the tribulation and fly over the tribulation He's going to fly over the tribulation. He's going to go to the second coming, and 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 the, just the tip of entering it. You know, basically entering into the kingdom. In fact, what he does, he takes you through Daniel nine verse twenty four. Okay, the se when the seventy weeks are completed, this is what's going to happen. So he's basically taking through that seventieth week, and then there's some things that happen after the seventieth week uh, that uh, in the next seventy five days. And then, then the kingdom is truly set up, okay? Everybody in the, in, you know, all Israel shall be saved. The land is totally purified, and, and, uh, and you have the, the uh, you know, basically all, all being righteous, at least to start things out, all right? All right, so verse, tw verse 4. And Jesus answered them and said unto them, Take heed that no man, what? Deceive, Deceive you. So there's going to be a lot of deception. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So why do they hear of wars and rumors of wars? I thought that there was a covenant, a covenant, a peace treaty signed. That's for Israel. That's just for Israel. When we go to the book of Revelation, you're going to find out that Antichrist comes out on a, or he, as the man of sin, comes out on a big white horse preaching peace. But if you take a look, there's war. And there's all kinds of war other places. He's, he's taking control of, 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 the, of the earth, right? There's a lot, of, a lot of battles. And you hear of all kinds of wars going on out there, but they're not happening in the land because there's a treaty, 
right? But you know, Daniel, you know, you follow the book of Daniel, you, you find it, you know, there's, there's lots of battles going on all around, but just not in the land, because there's a treaty. Um, verse, uh, verse six, well, verse seven. For the, for the nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against what? Kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. That's, Re that's Revelation chapter 6 and 7. All right, we'll get there. All these things are what? The beginnings of sorrows. All right. By the way, that's all in the first half of the tribulation too, by the way. Then, so then after that, then they shall deliver you up to be what? Afflicted and shall kill you. Okay, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So where are where are where are Jews at today? Are they all in the land? Are they all going to be in the land when the tribulation begins? Absolutely not, because when you know, no. Okay, in fact, the promise of of of, of God is that He's going to gather them all back, and they're going to be brought back into the land. All true Israel will be brought back into the land. But anybody, so there's Jews going to be spread all over the place, and they're going to be, you know, there's peace in Israel. But that, you know, if you're a Jew outside the land, you're not necessarily in the best situation. The book of James really talks about that in James chapter 2, about how there's deception and, and how, uh, you know, people come to your door and, and uh, you say peace and grace and go on your way. But the reason you do that is because you're afraid that if you say you are a believer or something like that, you will... Uh, be in trouble. Anyway, Matthew, we'll, we'll, we'll see it at the end of Matthew chapter 25. Keep going here. Okay. Verse 10. And then shall many be what? Offended. And that's, uh, uh, what, do, what do you think that means, offended? Get upset? Actually, it doesn't mean that. Uh, that's part of it. It's, they're, gonna, they're, going, they're going to, in grace, uh, offense, spiritual offense, is where a person's hindered in their faith, in their in their belief. They, you know, they, they're, they're, you know, so like I can, I can, I can hinder you. I can offend you by putting a stumbling block in your way, so you quit growing spiritually. All right. So like if I do something stupid, I, I can hinder you spiritually. Spiritual offense is, you know, off offending somebody is 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 you know, biblically is the idea of, of, of not allowing that person to grow spiritually. In this case, in the, in, in the, in the tribulation, this is a person who was, you know, maybe in the right way, but they, they stopped living that life. They're afraid. They're afraid, they're afraid to admit that they, you know, they've believed in Christ. Believe it or not, they're believing in Christ, right? You know, they're, they're not believing in Christ in grace, but he's the Messiah. They're like Peter, James, and John. They're kingdom saints, yeah. They're Jews. They're Jews, but they're Christians. I mean, you know, frankly, the kingdom saints were first called Christians. Saint, saints are in all dispensation, right? They're, they're believers, right? But I said they're offended. They're afraid to, you know, to, to, to live their testimony. And so they, they stumble. And, and what happens in the tribulation is that every soul on the face of the earth is confronted with the reality of making a choice. Either living your life as a believer to death or walking away and ending up going to hell is, is the bottom line. So there's, there's going to be a choice that confronts every person. Anyways, anyways, so that, then shall many be offended and, shall, and what they're going to do? They're going to what? They're going to betray one another. Mother's Day doesn't mean the same thing in the tribulation as it does today, right? So mothers will betray their children. Fathers will say, he's, he's, you know, he's a Christian, my son. Haul them away. Stuff like that. And they're gonna and they're gonna hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Okay? And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall what? Wax cold. It's just a time of, of terrible you know, sin. But verse thirteen says, But he that shall endure unto the end, what? The same shall be saved. Now I take maybe a different interpretation of what that means. I don't, and that's not necessarily meaning you live to the end of the tribulation. If that's the case, nobody's hardly saved. All right, if you live, you know, you know, you got to live to the end of the tribulation. This is live to the end of your life, right? Because there's there there there's a there there people you know people will be tortured and killed. Let me show you what I mean by that. Go to Revelation chapter twelve. Book of Revelation talks about being an overcomer, right? 
right? Overcomer. In fact, he shall endure to the end is that idea of overcoming. But well, Revelation chapter 12 gives you the definition of what it means to overcome. So in Revelation chapter 12, look at verse, um, well, you know, in verse 7, you have a war in heaven, Michael and his angels, right? They fight and, and with the devil and his angels, and the devil's angels are cast out of heaven to the earth. And, and, uh, and by the way, and the heavens now are fixed, all right, at that point, okay, because that's all been removed. But in ver- and, and, and by the way, verse 10 says that, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11, so he's cast down to the earth. And when he gets down to the earth, now this is the middle of tribulation, all right? Uh, it's, it talks about then those are on the earth. It says, and they overcame him. That's Satan and his angels. Overcame him by what? The blood of the Lamb. So they're, they're under the blood of Christ. And by the word of what? Their testimony. They said, I am a believer. I'm not taking the mark of the beast. I'm, you know, a Christian, right? And they love what? Unto the death. Then they lived at the end of the tribulation. They were put to death. They were put to death. They were, they were tortured. They were killed. They were, you know, they were, you know, they were, they were, uh, um, you know, you know, put in a situation where they had to try to, um, well, say something against their testimony. Look what it says in verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. By the way, that's actually a statement to you because you'll be there. Although, you know, the book of Revelation is not talking about anything of the body of Christ, but that is what you can read there. And ye that dwell in them, woe that it happens to the earth and of the sea, for the devils come down unto you having great wrath, because he now knoweth, he knoweth, I should add a word now there, that he hath but a short time. Right? Um, but anyways, they overcame. Definition of overcoming is you live your testimony until you die. By the, by, uh, it's a, there's a huge number that that, that that happens to, all right? Um, if you, um, the book of Revelation, as, we, as we'll go through it, we're going to see, you know, there's a question. Look what it says in Revelation, go to Revelation 6. After these initial judgments, which are just the beginnings of sorrows, all right, the beginning of sorrows in Revelation 6, you know, the white horses, or the horses coming out of heaven, which Christ said there's going to be wars, pestilence, famine, things like that. That's just the beginning of sorrows. The, the, the writer of Revelation, John, makes this statement, or at least he writes this statement in verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, Revelation 6, verse 17. Did I say that? Okay. For the great day of his wrath is come, and what? And who shall be able to stand? All right? And so it's a question, right? Well, the Word of God answers it, because it's chapter 7. Who's going to be able to stand? Well, there's a lot of people going to stand. You see the first comment about verse 4, you hear about the 144,000, right? So verse 4 says, I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all tribes of the children of Israel. So there's 144,000, right? But there's a bunch of others. Look at down verse 9. And after that, this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues. So they're just Jews? No, it's all kinds of people. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with what? White robes of palms in her hand, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and upon the, upon the Lamb. So, there's a, you know, so the question is, and by the way, this is the way the book of Revelation is laid out. Okay, sometimes a question happens, and then there's an answer. That's chapter 7. Sometimes it's sort of like uh, you have this sort of bouncing going on. You, know, you see what's going on in heaven, then you see what's going on on the earth. But it's still, what you have is a, is a progression in time that moves through this week, all right? Then there are some questions, again, some other, some pieces like, hey, you, there's some stuff we didn't share, we didn't talk about yet, so like Revelation 17 and 18 or what's going on with Babylon, all right? And, 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 and some stuff like that. But again, it takes you back and then leads you back through it, all right? But anyways, who are these people? In fact, John asked that, okay? And verse... Um, uh, well, actually, an elder says to him, one of the 24 elders, verse 13, one of the elders answered, saying to me, what are these which are, Revelation 7, guys, Revelation 7, verse 13, and one of the elders answered, saying to me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? You know, so who are these people, and where do they come from? And John says, he says to this elder, this angel, he says unto him, sir, thou knowest, 
And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of the God, serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, because that's what went on during tribulation. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. All right. So there's a whole herd of folks that come out of the tribulation, okay? But they didn't live to the end of the tribulation. Christ, what did Christ say? Unless those days be shortened, Matthew 24, no flesh should survive. So it wasn't like all these people that sort of made it through the tribulation. They died. They were killed. They loved not their lives to the death. Look what Mark chapter 9 says. The Lord Jesus Christ talks an awful lot about the tribulation. Uh, in fact, probably his favorite subject. The other subject was hell and judgment. I know, we, you know when you, everybody talks about what Christ talked about, talked about love and the beatitudes, and yes, he did. But uh, you, uh, you take down the words he says and you, you add them up, you find out he's talking an awful lot about judgment and the tribulation, getting this nation through that period of time. Mark chapter 9 is an interesting passage. Um, what, you, what you go down to... Um, if you get down to verse, say, oh, I'm in the wrong, oh, I've got to get the right page myself. Mike 9, verse 42. Actually, I've got to go a little lower than that, but um, you, uh, you, you, you have a warning of hell and stuff like that. But in verse uh, 43, we'll start in verse 43. And if thy hand, what? Offend. Offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So if thy hand offend thee, I don't like this hand. Is that what that means? If this hand causes me to do wrong, cut it off. Right? Got that? Well, that means I'm personally going to cut it off? Now, I'm being, I'm, my hand's on a chopping block, and it says, renounce your faith. Take the mark of the beast. Keep on going. Verse 30, 45. And if thy foot offend thee, What? Cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt in the life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. It's better to get, you know, by the way, you know, what's this life thing talking about anyway? So the next verse says it. Verse 46, or verse 47. Thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the what? The kingdom of God. It's talking about the kingdom. So it's better for you to go into the kingdom without a hand than that, you know, and, and you know, have it cut off than to go into hell. It's better for thee to have your foot cut off, you're being tortured is what's going on, right, than to go into hell, right, to get into the kingdom. It is better for you to have your eye plucked out. It's better for thee, you know, and go into the kingdom with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire, where their, where their worm dieth not and their fire is not quenched. There's going to be a period, you know, believers are going to suffer during the tribulation, Lots of them, and they're going to be put to death. And will they keep, by the way, it's not grace believers, right? Not members of the body of Christ. These are kingdom saints. Keep it straight, right? You're already in heaven. Things are perfect for you, for us, for me. Right, we're, we're there. But on the earth, this is what's going on. Go to Matthew 24 again. So let's keep going. So anyway, so there's going to be hard things. And they're going to, you know, they're going to endure to the end, but it's the end of their life, right? The end of their life. Verse 24, or verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness in all nations, and then shall what? The end come. All right? So then the end come. So they're going to, you know, so, they're, so the gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in all the world, right? To all the earth, right? And then shall the end come. The end is referring to the second half of the tribulation here. Okay? And then verse 15 starts that. By the way, that gospel is going to be preached everywhere. How's that going to happen? The 144,000. 144,000. They have some interesting gifts. They have the gifts that happened to Pentecost. They have the gifts of tongues. You know, so was, what was tongues all about? Well, if the mystery had not happened, those 3,000 saved in a day, those 5,000 saved in a day, okay, they, were going to, they were the seeds of that 144,000. That would, have, that would have went forward, all right? That's, that's what would have occurred. And they would have, you know, they would have preached the gospel of the kingdom to 
everybody around the world, okay? They had went up to the Chinese folks and spoke Chinese and they spoke Spanish and they spoke whatever, whatever language happened to be the person they run into. That it, you know, it was understood by them, right? Uh, they don't have no special abilities. I mean, they have no special powers. There's some ability to heal, taking away the curse, okay? The, the curse, which, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he's on the earth, he, he healed people, right? Right, he healed, you know, by the way, how many people, you know, how many people did he heal? It says all of them. Everybody came to him, he just healed them, right? You know, whatever it was. What he was doing was lifting the curse that the Israel, the nation was under. And what they should have recognized was that, that he's God, because he's undoing what God did, right? That's the only way. That's what he said, how can you do this? Well, they should have recognized that he's God. He's lifting, lifting the curse of Deuteronomy 28. Anyways, verse 15. Anyway, so they're preaching the gospel. Came, so 144,000. And we'll see that in the book of Revelation, right? So he's doing an over, uh, an over, uh, a flyover. By the way, when does everybody hear by? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall what? The end come. So in the first half of the tribulation, those 144,000 do their witness. And all the earth is heard. All right? Every person, there's no excuse. Every person had somebody clearly explain to them the gospel of the kingdom. Okay, what God's doing, Messiah and Jesus Christ, right? And they made a choice. Those 144,000 went to every person. So they walked up to the man of sin, Antichrist, and somebody shared it with him. What do you think happened to that person that shared it with him? Okay. okay. He was put to death. By the middle of the tribulation, you find that all 144,000 are in heaven. Okay, Everyone's been, everyone has been killed. So now you're back, you're back to, you know, square one, I guess, right? But, and, and there's, you know, there's some, a variety of uh, script, uh, prophecies to talk about that uh, trying to find somebody with the word is, uh, it's excellent possible. There's a famine in the land for the word is referring to in the second half of the tribulation where a person's all of a sudden the mark of the beast, by the way, the mark of the beast hasn't been set up yet, all right? He's not Antichrist yet to the middle of the tribulation, okay? And so all of a sudden now it gets set up and it becomes real, all right? And see, people are trying to figure out, what did that guy say to me? Yeah, what, 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 what was that? Okay, and, uh, and now they're trying to, you know, try to make it real. Verse 20, verse, chapter 24, verse 15. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Antichrist is going to stand in the temple, call himself God. When you see that, you know, if you're watching and you're waiting and you're paying attention, you need to run, all right? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on that, by the way, in Judea, right? Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Because you're going to take a Sabbath day journey, which is not far. Okay. Okay. So, you know, if you're, you know, you're a believer. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to the, of the beginning of the world to this, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days sh shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, this is in the second half, if any man says, lo, here is Christ, or there, what? Believe it not, because you know what's going on? They're setting people up. There's Messiah. Go see him. And then what they're going to do is they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to, be, they're going to be deception. For there shall, be, shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, what? Believe it not. All right? So in the second half of the tribulation, there is incredible deception. All right? It's incredible deception. And, and, and what you have is believers struggling with, 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 their, with their faith. Because if they share their faith in any fashion, they risk being put to death or, or, or punished or thrown in prison and tortured, right? You know, and why is, you know, because that's where the other book of, you know, well, in, Ma in, Matthew, in Ma uh, Matthew 25, we'll just go to the end real quick here. So Christ has come back. We're going to go back a little bit, but, you know, we're, this is the second coming. This is after the tribulation. 
you have this judgment. You know, it's, it's called the judgment of the nations, but it's really the nations are coming forward and, and all those that are in the nations. It's, it, it's an individual judgment. It's not like I'm from Egypt, so I go to hell. It's, I, you know, I'm coming up and then God separates the sheep and the goats. It says, it, uh, anyway, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. This is after the tribulation. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from his goats. And he shed the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. I understand why it's, you think it's goat nations and sheep nations, but it's not. It's talking about the people in those nations, right? All, not all Israel is Israel, right? right? So, I mean, there's, you know, there's a separation. He's talking to the individuals here. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, this is James 2, for I was a hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. So this is Christ talking to them, right? Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee or thirsty or gave thee drink? When saw we stranger or took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch you have done unto the one of the least of these my brethren, you have what? Done unto me. So the issue is, the issue is they showed their faith in a time of situation where they were risking it all, right? And then you find out other ones rejected it. They, they, they left their, you know, either left their faith or didn't really have faith. And, and then they ended up being judged and cast into hellfire, right? Anyway, so that's, that's what's going on during the tribulation for an individual, right? And, it's, and, and that, that whole period of time where you have this, you know, it's the beginning of sorrows and then great tribulation, right? Great tribulation. Back to Matthew 24. No, we don't have time, sorry. Uh, but anyways, Matthew, let's go back to Matthew 24. Anyways, verse 27. Penny, has, did she click her fingers yet? Oh, man. Okay. I already got the click. All right, okay. So here, verse 27, just so, so you know it ends. All right, so, th so on our flyby, we now begin this, we begin dealing with the stuff really at the end of the tribulation, the tribulation ends. Verse 27, for as the lightning coming out of the, cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, shall also the what? The coming of the Son of Man be. By the way, if you saw lightning shooting across from the east to the west, is it noticeable? Yeah. Lots of people are going to see it, right? Okay. What about the rapture? Noticeable? Lots of people going to see it? No. Did I go the wrong direction? Okay. This way. I don't know which way it is in the, in the gym here. But anyways, you know, the rapture is not, a, you know, it's not going to be seen, okay? It's a secret coming. It's a special coming. It's a private coming, okay? Uh, anyways, uh, verse 28. Verse, you know, but anyway, so now we begin after the tribulation. And you have these parables, verse 32 down, which talks about in the days of Noah, Right, and two in the field, and the, and, and the two, you know, two in the field, two, at the, you know, two, uh, and the, you know, whatever. There's two grinding. There's two in the field, and there's two, you know, whatever. But they're there, and, and one's taken. That is, that's after the tribulation, during at the second coming. But the second coming is not a one moment event. The second coming lasts for multiple days. Christ comes back and he purges the land, and that's what's being talked about here. There's a judgment. And by the way, here's the decision factors. Verse tw chapter 25, verse 1, well, 1 through about 20, uh, 30 or so, all right? That's, that's the land being purged. And, how, and, and, the, and the, uh, you, know, you have the ten virgins, and then you have the, 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 the talents, I believe, right? The faithful servants, right? That's talking about Israel. He's going through the land. He's purging the land. The book of Zechariah says, in all the land, two-thirds will be cut off. Okay? And only one-third is going to go through the fire and get into the kingdom. So really, there's three at the well, and two are going to be taken. Because only two-thirds of the land is going to be cut off. Two, all the believers, when Christ is done, when he gets off his horse and goes into in Jerusalem, there's not one unbeliever in the land. Okay? After the tribulation, the book of Ezekiel, there's a group of individuals that are hired to bury the bodies, right? And as years of time passes before they bury all the bodies, they have to deal with them appropriately uh, because of, of the land. Uh, then you have the sheep, goats sort of situation. That's the rest of the nations are judged, right? And you have the righteous, 
And the righteous are going to hell. So then you enter the kingdom with all righteous, but then it changes. Pretty quick life, because people get born. Okay, there are people being born. Let's talk about, we're going to talk about this more next time. We'll get, we're going to start going tick, tick, tick as we move through it then. We're going to go in the book of Revelation though. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your blessings. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Uh, Lord, use this day to uh, bring honor and glory to you. Uh, use each of us, Lord. Uh, touch our hearts to be aware of those hurting around us, those that are in need. Give us the words to speak. Let us, Lord, uh, be those uh, faithful children you've called us to be. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to worry about this day we're talking about. But Lord, we are going to be in your presence, and we're going to be rejoicing with you forever. And we just thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of your word, Lord, that we are not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation by your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we're so thankful for this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You've been listening to the High Band with Word Podcast, Transformer Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.